Today's video, we're going to talk about the SN95. This is the fourth generation of Ford's pony car. It was built from 1994 to 2004. The second half of the SN95 is referred to as a new edge. I did a video on that eh, last year sometime. I'll put a link to it at the end of the video. In this video, we're going to look at the first half of the cars from 1994 through 1998. I see these cars as underappreciated. I owned a 95 GTS. It's like a GT without any option. It had the base interior and roll up windows, but I love that car. I had it for five years. I put a little over 80,000 miles on it. It was a good performer. And when compared to the Fox that preceded it, it's better in every way. In recent times, Fox body Mustangs, their values have gone up. They've appreciated quite a bit, especially over the last five to six years. While the SN95 cars just kind of languish, they're out there. Nice examples of these cars can be bought relatively inexpensively. I think they're the best of the Fox bodies. Let's see if I can't try to get your thinking to align that way as well. So let's get started. Road and Track says the latest and best Mustang hits the ground running. Auto Week says the all new interior is nothing short of a design triumph. Motor Trend says its first class styling, dynamics, and performance make it the most significant new American car this year. The all new Ford Mustang. It is what it was and more. The 1994 model Mustang is internally codenamed SN95 at Ford. S stands for Small Slash Specialty Vehicle, N stands for North American Operations, and 95 is the sequence number of approved vehicle projects. Ford spent $700 million and took only 36 months to rework the Fox Body platform into the SN95 Mustang. In the automotive world, that's fast and cheap. And it had to be, as this car was an off-ramp from the intended path of the Mustang, which was to be the front-wheel drive Mazda-based platform that eventually became the Ford Probe. Make no mistake, this car is a refresh of the third-gen Fox body, a complete refresh in almost all aspects, but the SN95 was based on the Fox body Mustang, and no other car in the Ford lineup was built on this platform. Ford engineers and designers completely restyled both the interior and exterior of the Mustang. It had a longer wheelbase and a wider track. They went further by stiffening the unibody and making it structurally more solid, mainly due to larger rocker panels, roof rails, and stronger joints. This gave the car better ride and handling characteristics. The SN95 was only offered in a traditional two-door coupe and convertible layout. The SN95 Mustang featured power four-wheel disc brakes as standard, with ABS optional on the V6-powered models and standard on the V8-powered GTs. A five-lug bolt pattern on the wheels became standard. The base Mustang was powered by a 165-horsepower 3.8-liter SX V6. Standard equipment on the car included tilt steering wheel, a digital clock, full center console, a driver's footrest, interval windshield wipers, full analog gauges including a tack, voltmeter, temp, fuel, and oil pressure gauges. The GT Mustang was powered by the 215 horsepower 5 liter V8 that produced 285 foot-pounds of torque. Additional equipment on the GT included 16-inch 5-spoke aluminum wheels, fog lamps, a single-wing rear spoiler, special GT buckets with lateral supports and power lumbar support, and a leather-wrapped steering wheel. Ford's 4-speed AOD-E automatic transmission and T5 5-speed manual transmission were available with both engines. The high-performance SVT Cobra model was introduced. It received a 240-horsepower, 5.0-liter V8, paired to a world-class T5 manual transmission. That's an upgraded version of the standard T5. It's capable of handling more power. The Cobra featured a unique front bumper, rear spoiler, 17-by-8-inch cast aluminum wheels, upgraded brakes, 
These were 13 inch vent in front and 11.65 inch rear discs with dual piston calipers and standard ABS. The suspension of the Cobra was further improved utilizing thicker anti-roll bars and chassis tuning. Cobra badges replaced GT emblems, and in the interior, the Cobra featured white face gauges, 160 mile per hour speedometer, and the Cobra name was embossed on the steering wheel. The 1994 Cobra convertible was selected as the pace car for the Indy 500. All 1,000 1994 Cobra convertibles were Indy 500 pace car editions. Just over 5,000 1994 Cobra coupes were produced and were available in red, white, or black. Ford produced 123,198 Mustangs in 1994. 1995 was a complete carryover year for the Mustang, with no noticeable changes save one, as 1995 was the only year the race car for the road Cobra R package was offered. This was stripped of any comfort options in order to save weight. The Cobra R featured a 300 horsepower, 351 cubic inch Windsor V8, made it to a Tremec TR-3550 five-speed manual transmission. The fog lamps were replaced with brake cooling ducts. Only 250 1995 Cobra Rs were produced, all in white with saddle cloth interior, and only available to purchase by race teams or drivers with a racing license. 1995 was another strong sales year for the Mustang, with 185,986 cars being sold. That includes over 69,000 GTs, GTSs, and Cobras in either coupe or convertible. The 1996 model Mustang sees Ford drop the 302 small block and replace it with the single overhead cam two-valve 4.6-liter modular V8. This engine produced the same 215 horsepower and 285 foot-pounds of torque, but improved fuel efficiency and reduced weight. The automatic transmission was changed to Ford's 4R70W4 speed, which also featured refinements in drivability and efficiency. Ford changed the taillights in the rear to a more vertical style. The 1996 SVT Cobras were powered by the dual overhead cam four valve version of the 4.6 modular motor. It made 305 horsepower and 300 foot pounds of torque. This combination recorded zero to 60 times of 5.4 seconds and a quarter mile time of 13.99 at 101 miles per hour, as reported by Car and Driver magazine. Other than power plants, there were no significant changes to the Mustang in 1996. Ford produced 135,980 Mustangs in 1996. I will rebel, but not forget how to smile. I will cut to the chase. I will take giant steps forward. I will rock the boat and everything else. I will get in your face. I will run. For this race is mine. Ford Mustang, it's your race. 1997 and 1998 Mustangs saw little changes from 96. They were almost complete carryovers, minus a redesign and wheel options. 108,344 Mustangs were delivered in 1997, and 175,552 Mustangs were sold in 1998. The SN95 Mustang won Motor Trends Car of the Year in 1994. During the five-year run of the first part of the SN95, they sold over 620,000 Mustangs. That's a far greater pace than what you see in today's cars. And while the Fox bodies have appreciated, the SN95s are probably not too far behind. All the nice Foxes are getting snatched up, but the SN95s, the nice ones, they're still out there. I owned a 2003 Mach 1. That's the new edge car, the last of the Fox bodies. Yes, it was white, and I like that car. I had it for roughly seven years. Did a great job for me. If you're a fan of those cars, you can check out a video on the new edges right over here. If you like this video, please hit the like button. That helps other people see it. And if you like this type of content, consider subscribing. There's a lot of it on the channel. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time. We'll see you.